What is it about seeing our childhood stories suddenly getting brought up again? What is it about hearing an old song when you hit shuffle? A song that takes you back to when things were a little bit simpler? The human mind is quite a fickle thing, so let us ask ourselves this. Why does the mere concept of nostalgia make the brain spark? My name is Nina, and welcome to my TED Talk. So what is nostalgia anyway? For all of you who may be confused, this is a person when I'm talking to them normally, and this is that same person after we start talking about Studio Ghibli movies. If you're still confused, this is another person when I'm chatting to them normally, and this is that same person when we start talking about our primary school days. And this is my brother when I'm chatting to him normally, and this is him after we start talking about old Marvel movies. But then I mention his ex-girlfriend and he starts to look a little bit more like this. But are you all starting to see the pattern here? When we focus on the positive aspect, every single person will start to look a little bit more happy when they're discussing something they were quite fond of, and of course, vice versa. See, nostalgia is that feeling we get when the brain recognizes something very familiar to us, perhaps something we haven't heard of in a while, as it instantly replays the good memories we have of that certain event. According to Dr. Sanam Hafiz, the founder of Comprehensive Consultation Psychological Services, your blood flow will start to increase, and neurotransmitters are released to the body, which creates positive responses. Or in simple terms, just imagine your brain jumping up and down and screaming, hey, I remember that, but I digress. <laughs> For example, you ever have that moment in your life when you're feeling a little bit sentimental and you start going through your old stuff again, recalling the good old days and whatnot, but then it hits you. You slowly start to realize the reality you're in now and that everything's changed. And soon, the pain starts to seep in till you're left wondering, where you went wrong. See, it's that specific callback that is most important here. It's what we're here to discuss. Because while nostalgia can make us feel content and joyful at first, it is also a feeling that can be tragically bittersweet. We start to think along the lines of, man, I was so social as a kid. What happened to me? Or perhaps, maybe I should have been honest back then. Maybe I should have actually said what I felt. What have I been doing my entire life? And then all of a sudden, it feels as though you're drowning in a myriad of emotions, some that are happy, some that are sad, and some where you can't even tell what's happening. And in some cases, people tend to get discouraged when they realize they can't attain the same kind of happiness they had back then. And so they fall, they never get back up. They stay stuck in the past, and they never once try to focus on their own future. Now, some may wonder if looking back at those parts of the past is that painful, then why should we look back at them at all? Surely the regret we feel overtakes the good times, right? But on the other hand, there's another type of person who doesn't look back even once, and they think they are 100% right in doing so, but they couldn't be further from the truth. You shouldn't throw away your own memories just because you can't face them or because you don't bother to. There is a clear spectrum here. On the left-hand side, you see a person who is too stuck in the past. And on the right-hand side, you see another man who is entirely focused on his future. It is not right to stay trapped in either extremes of this line right here. But this brings me to the purpose of my rambling. We have to learn how to look back. Now, the use of nostalgia may not always be happy, but the only focus on that aspect is invalid. Do you remember being a little kid and running around and laughing without a care in the world? Do you remember being introduced to every single good thing in your life right now? for the first time ever, whether that be your friends, your favorite food, your favorite movies, and etc. People always tend to look back and they just go, man, my life turned out horrible compared to back then. But that's just it, full stop. They never once try to consider on the ways to improve the now instead of continuously self-deprecating themselves because of then. I want to ask you all a question. From the bottom of your heart, do you truly want to be that happy again? Think about it for a second. Do you want to be better? Do you want to be the best version of yourself possible? If so, one can't do anything if they only sit and wallow in self-pity while never once trying to move their own life to somewhere where the grass is a bit greener, even if that shift might be the slightest bit brighter for themselves. Now, I know a lot of people say that there are a bit too many factors in life to actually make that big of a change, whether that be school, work, your friends, your family, your lover, etc. I know too many people who think that life is a bit too short to put that much effort into it. And honestly, sometimes I get it, I understand. 
because just recently I actually finished my exams that determined whether or not I got into college. So I remember feeling fatigued, a little bit lost and stressed out over my mind. But I also remember at the same time telling myself that I shouldn't make those same excuses because at that point I had no choice but to do my best. You know, when I feel nostalgia, I don't just think back on the times where I felt the most ecstatic or content. I actually think back on a certain point in time when I was hunched over a toilet, puking my own guts out with tears streaming down my face at around 3 a.m. in the morning. I had just gotten sick for the third time in a row in a span of about two months. Now I remember at the time I felt as though all hope was lost because I'd already completely given up on the chance of me feeling better at any point in my life. I had already wasted so many other people's time and effort just because my own immune system couldn't take a fight. But you see, it wasn't the fact that I was just sick that was the most painful part about it all. Because back in 2020 to 2021, my entire lifestyle back then was just wrong on so many accounts. Because all I did was just lay down in my bed 24 seven watching YouTube, watching movies, with little to no interaction with anybody. In those two years, I cut out a lot of people that I cared about and I prevented myself from getting the help that I didn't know I even needed. So that night, I remember going back to bed and asking myself a question. At that point in time, I was still in pain and I was too afraid to call anybody. So I asked myself, what would happen if I just died right here, right now? What would that do for anybody? How would that affect other people? How many people would notice? And for the first time, I feel like I, was, I knew what the answer was. And the fact that I did, well, it flicked a switch in me, in a way. Because for the first time in two very long years, I was aware of everything that I had done to myself. So when I think back on that moment, I don't just feel the shame or the regret or the guilt. I kind of look at it now with rose tinted glasses in a way, because while it may have been painful, it was a slight push that I needed to realize that I need to be better. It was a necessary slap in the face to make me realize that I have to force a halt on this downhill slope that my life was currently cannonballing into. And I couldn't be happier that I realized it at that time because it took me too long just to know that I was absolutely miserable. And it took way too many visits to the hospital and way too many needles in my arm to realize that I shouldn't have had to live like this, that I didn't want to live like this. Because you see, our memories, while our happy memories might be motivating to us, our other memories, especially the most agonizing of them all, they are the best motivator to tell us that we shouldn't have had to feel like that ever again. Because we can always strive to be better in a world where nobody's perfect and there is no one who's an exception to that rule. We can always try to be the almost exception to that fact. But I'm not here to preach this like I have everything figured out in my life. Right now, I'm still stuck in the same boat as a lot of you. And it's not like I've solved my issue of social anxiety and so on. But right now, I also have people that are by my side and who have my back. And honestly, I couldn't be more grateful that I have them here. So what I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't underestimate looking back at yourself. If you ever had those moments at night when you can't fall asleep because your brain just keeps displaying your biggest failures in 4K, well, those moments, they're more important than you think. But that's just the tip of the iceberg because self-improvement is not the only thing to consider here. So, let me ask again. Why is it important for us to look back? You see, when we grow older, the fond memories that we make, they might be the only thing that will keep us together in a way, because life just isn't going to last forever. And that fact alone still terrifies me to this day. So why should one live life if you can't look back on what made you who you are today? You shouldn't throw away your own memories just because they're too painful to remember or too unimportant to keep. It all happens for a reason. So if you're still here, living your life and putting effort in like you do, then all those silly little things back then, 
they weren't so useless after all. I'm not saying to keep clinging to the past, because no matter how fruitful or dull it may be, the past, present, and future are all things we should cherish while we can, because we don't have unlimited time. But that's also what exactly makes the act of living so memorable, isn't it? Because it's our one and only shot at life, and we shouldn't waste that. I'm here today not just to tell you to look back, but to look forward as well. Who knows? Maybe one day, when you're a lot older than now, and you're sitting in your rocking chair and looking out at the beautiful sunset across the horizon, you can look back on the wild journey that you've had up to this point. Then you can strongly and proudly tell yourself that it was all worth it in the end. Thank you all for listening, and please live your lives well.